I'm Todd Hirano and I'm here. Um, I'm going to be tying a fly that I developed probably in 2012 or 13. It's called the Little Wang and it's a skating dry fly for steelhead. So I'm just going to go ahead and get going with tying this fly. Um, I start off with what I have here is a size 4 wet fly hook. Um, it's a Mustad S80 hook, but it's the equivalent equivalent basically of an old Mustad 3906. Um, you can also, I think the equivalent is also like a TMGO 3761. Um, and I forgot here, I actually need to... What I also do on these hooks is I, I take like a emery board thing and I kind of roughen it up a little bit. I use gel spun thread on these flies to keep the hair tied down nice and tight. Um, I have Vivas gel spun in white. This is um, 150 denier, so I start off with a base wrap of the white, starting right from the very front of the hook. I want to make sure that I get a really solid foundation of thread. I want to be sure that the thread doesn't spin on the hook so that when the fly is done um, it can handle some pretty rough use without without material spinning around the, the hook shank there. So I start with that base wrap of thread and I come up to the midway point back up on the hook shank And then the next step is to tie in a moose tail. I use moose body hair, uh, which you can uh, get at most fly shops. So I take the moose body and even it up in a hair stacker. And I don't like my tails too thick, but um, maybe about very big of a bunch of moose hair. And I measure it so that the overall length of the tail is just a little bit longer than the overall length of the hook. I measure that back to the end of the thread to keep that proportion and tie down. From the midpoint, going back to the rear of the fly. And then I go ahead and trim the butts here. <clears throat> okay, and at this point I'm using purple UV crystal flash. I have uh, four strands on each side. So I take four strands and I tie it on one side. Come back with another four strands which I've grouped together with some masking tape. Here's what I've done. Come back to the front with the thread, trim the crystal flash just past the ends of the moose body here. And um, in, you know, in reality, this the crystal flash in the tail is optional. This is uh, if a person feels like having that in there aesthetically, if that appeals to you, fine. And the next step is a green butt. And by the way, this particular version of a, a little wang pattern that I'm tying is called the rodeo clown. It uh, kind of has some bright colors to it so um, that's how it got its name. I tie in the, I'm using bright green glow bright here. Um, come to the back of the fly. On this size of a fly I put about seven wraps of this green glow bright for the butt. 
And by the way, I'm using, I started off with the white gel sponge just to give a bright underbody for the floss. Even though the glow bright is pretty, it, it kind of holds its color anyway. I just used the white thread just to kind of keep things bright underneath. And the next thing I'm using is um, just size small silver tinsel, this uh, Uni brand. I tie it in at this point. I have a weird habit of um, keeping the floss on the spool. I have a rubber band on my vise. Um, you can also just cut a length of tinsel if you want. Um, I just have this weird habit of conserving materials. So, and then what at this? What I'll do at this point in this particular pattern, I'll go ahead and tie off the white thread at this point. So. I do like a whip finish by hand basically, tie off the white thread and I'm going to switch over to uh, purple glow bright floss at this point, I have it on a bobbin. And then I create the body here. <clears throat> I just make wraps with the purple glow bright going up and down the length of the body, which is approximately, you know, in the rear, the rear half of the fly. Um, I go around with the purple glow bright, making sure that it's covered the white floss. And then at this point, I'm going to change colors with my thread for the front section of the fly. So I'm going with Vivas 150. Then your gel spun, <clears throat> again starting in from the very front of the fly, tying it down nice and secure. And then I come up against the purple glow bright, tie over it to secure it. Come back on itself to make sure that it's secure. And at this point, I take my tinsel, make about five wraps around the body as evenly as I can. Okay, tie it off. Okay, and at this point is where we start with foam. I got some pink foam for the shell back and the lip. I just cut into, into a triangular shape like that. Tie it in by the tip. And then at this point, I'm going to use um, hairline cactus chenille and large for this particular size of a fly. And I use this as just to add some flash and to create a little ball of material that helps splay the wing out. So I tie this in, I, I strip off to the core, tie it in, um, make two to three wraps of the cactus chenille close together. Tied in securely. Trim it off on the bottom here. Sometimes I'll trim this material down a little bit just to tidy it up on the top.
Okay, and again, I'm going to add more flash, which is um, is optional. It depends on your tastes. So I tie in the purple UV flash, four strands on each side. Come up with both of the four strands and cut it approximately even with the length of the foam. And at this point, I'm going to be using some, for this particular pattern, I'm going to be using orange cow elk for the wing. And I, it's hard to describe what's, what size of a bunch of hair you'd use. I mean, probably the size of a pencil, maybe a little bigger in diameter. And then I just get the fluff out of it, get rid of the guard hairs. And then it goes in the hair stacker. And typically with stiff hairs like elk, um, you, you know, you'll notice that the hair tends to have a natural curvature to it. So as the hair comes out of the stacker, I, I generally tend to tie the, uh, measure the hair up against the hook with the curvature somewhat going upwards that, like that. And I measure the length of the wing to be about even with the, the bend of the hook on this fly. So I, I measure it out, I hold it down with my left hand, I come over with a couple soft wraps over top of it, and then at this point what I do is I push, I'm going to push down on the front of this bunch of hair because I want the tips of the hair to come out on the bottom of the fly. So as I'm tightening that thread, I'll I'm pushing that bunch of hair down so it, it goes around the bottom of the hook. And then I'll make a third wrap. I, re I remove it from the vise by hand like this and I'm, now I'm looking at the tips here. I'm kind of making a mess on uh, Courtney's desk here, but uh, <laughs> I just go ahead and trim it roughly short like this. Put it back in the vise. Get rid of those stray hairs. So I take these, uh, the butts of the hair and I push back on it. And then I bring the thread forward through that, the butts of the hair. Just one wrap like that coming through the top and then I tie in front of that, that bunch of hair and then at this point what I do is I trim the butts pretty short, almost flush on the top, coming around, trimming it pretty short. this point I make sure there's a bit of a gap between the eye of the hook and the the butts of the hair that's left there just I want to make sure I have enough room to tie the foam down 
So at this point, what I do is I take my scissors and I use it to, as best as I can, separate the hair in half. And then I bring the foam through the middle of the hair. Make sure that it's sitting evenly on each side, roughly. And then at this point, I'll pinch upwards on the foam, like this. And then I'll slowly bring the thread around. I'll make a couple soft wraps, like that. Flatten out the foam on the top a little bit, and then slowly draw the thread tight. Make another wrap around that to secure it down. Trying to make sure that things are, are even. And then this fly involves a lot of foam, so I'm gonna be using this piece of yellow foam that I've cut into this re rectangular shape. And then I cut a V notch in it on one side. Okay, so I take this piece of foam with the V-notch towards the back and I fold it, again, fold it upwards, like this. And I lay it over the top of the pink foam and then again come around two soft wraps. Make sure that it's sitting down straight and then slowly draw it tight. Make a third wrap over that and um, last bits of foam here now. The forward facing foam pieces. Um, recently what I've been doing, well pre previously what I was doing is just tying one foam, single foam post in the front, you know, like for instance, this, a white piece of foam like this. Um, but what I've been finding is, you know, having two pieces of foam, both white and black can kind of give that bi-visible effect where you know in certain light conditions the white will show up and then when you have silver glare in the evening time or early mornings the black will show up so in some of my flies recently I've been tying two pieces of foam on there again two soft wraps straighten everything up and then draw tension on the thread there at that point Make a third wrap to lock it down. And then I push up on all of the foam and then I come in front and make a few wraps there to secure everything. And at this point, I'll take my whip finishing tool and make two five wrap whip finishes. So. Five wraps there, but to lock it down, I'll make another five wrap whip finish over top of the first one. So I'll tighten that up. And then trim it off. Then at this point, I'll look at, you know, the way the, the hair has been laid down um, if it's not completely even, I'll trim some off on the bottom here. Just tidy it up a bit. So that's what I've done there, is just kind of cleaned up the bottom of the fly. And I'll take a look at the foam lip. Um, you don't want it too long, so in this case I kind of cut a slight slant in, into it. So that's kind of approximately the proportion that you want. Um, and then I'll, in, in this particular one, I'll trim back that yellow portion as well. So, so there we have it, the completed rodeo clown.